Hallelujah. I, I am born again to win. I thank God he justified me. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new woman. Oh, things have passed away. I'm a born again. Hallelujah. Glory be to God forever and forever. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I have something today I want to share with you. Something small. I just had a dream uh, the other day. I think it was three days ago. I was speaking to some uh, three guys and I was telling them about the great, great exchange that took place on the cross. So I know that I was quoting them this scripture that is written in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 that says that God made Jesus to be seen. Who knew no sin? Who never seen? He made him to be seen so that we should, then there was exchange that took place and cross, so that we should be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So that's what I want to talk today a little bit just to share with you about this great exchange that happened on Calvary. It did not happen in the old covenant because we in the old covenant was just a type and shadow. Like for example in the book of Leviticus, the Bible says that when somebody sinned, you know, they will bring a goat, for example, a goat without blemish, without spot, and then the sinner will put their hand on that goat. That goat will become like a scapegoat. Then they say they will kill the goat and use the blood now. You know, so that was a type and shadow was just pointing to the cross. It was just pointing to Jesus, the real, our real Passover lamb that will go to the cross to die for the whole human race, to bring many sons to glory. So there was a great exchange that happened on the cross of Calvary, a divine exchange that happened. The Bible talk about that in First Corinthians. I mean, that's Second Corinthians. Uh, this is said God made Jesus to be uh, sin for us. Who knew no sin? So that we should become now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So if you are born again Christian, you are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus because Jesus was made sin as a sacrifice for you. The Bible talks in First Corinthians, uh, I think the First Corinthians five seven that Jesus is now our Passover sacrifice. So it is not the old types and shadow again like in the old covenant. You know, now it is now the real substance, the real Jesus has come and gone to the cross already since 2000 years ago. So if you read the book of Matthew, you will see how he's telling you about like for the exchange that happened on the cross for sickness and disease. He says that Jesus, in said Matthew 8, verse 16 and 17, he said he himself took our infirmity and bore our sicknesses that it might be fulfilled, which was written by Isaiah, that is Isaiah the prophet in Isaiah 53. Verse 5, that he himself was wounded for our transgression. It is our transgression, he was wounded. He was bruised for our iniquity. Iniquity is something that you do continuously that you cannot stop. He was bruised for our iniquity. All the chastisement that God chastised his son, that brought us peace today so that for us to have relationship with God, was laid upon Jesus. He was, he was punished for our behalf. And then the Bible said that by the stripes that was given unto him before he went to the cross, all those stripes on his back and on his head, the crown on his head, where he was bleeding blood, by his stripes, we were healed. That's what the Bible said. Because in the book of Genesis 3, God was promising the devil. He said, the seed of this woman will bruise your head. He was talking about Jesus Christ, one seed. One seed, which is his second Adam, will bruise the head of the devil. And then he said that the devil will bruise his heel. Bruise his heel, 
means to take what happened on the cross that is for to re, to deliver us on the grave of the devil from the strong man to deliver us on the grave of the devil jesus christ and uh, satan now the bible says that says uh, if the the priests of this world would have known they won't have crucified the lord of glory so that is why jesus christ went to the cross so that was for the bruising. They say he was bruised for a transgression. He was wounded for iniquity. So he can deliver us. And by his stripes we were healed. But the seed of this woman, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, which God promised in the garden when the devil fooled Adam and Eve, and commit, make them to commit sin. Sin is a transgression of God's law. So they did commit sin against God. So the Bible says that from that time, God promised the seed of this woman, is going to crush the head of that serpent. And this, that, that crushing will happen on Calvary cross. So that is why now we are free, delivered from the hand of the devil. The Bible says he has translated us from the kingdom of darkness and remove us, put us to the kingdom of, this, of his own dear son and make us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He has, the, the Bible continues in the book of Colossians, say he has blotted out all the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. That means the law, the commandments, all the, the statutes that was against us, which we could not keep. J Jesus blotted it all out, removed it out of, out of our way, nailed it onto the, his cross. From there, he disarmed principality and power. He make a show of them openly, triumphal over them. He, he makes Satan, that serpent, to be stinkless against the human race, especially for those who are born again Christian. So the serpent is like a toy now. He's stingless. He has no power over the human race. If you know the truth, what Jesus did for you on Calvary, on the cross of Calvary. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So he took our infirmity. He took our sicknesses. He bore it on his own body. By his stripes, we were healed. So that was a divine exchange that took place on the cross. That is one of them. There is another divine exchange that took also about healing. First Peter 2 24 says he himself bore our sin on his own body, that on the tree that we should be dead to sin. Now we are dead to sin because we died with Jesus Christ to sin. And we live now unto righteousness. They say that we should be dead to sin and live now unto righteousness. If you are born again, Christian, you are living now unto righteousness. And then he said, by his stripes, we were healed. So it's 2,000 years ago that happened. So now it's for you to claim your healing and take your healing because it's already finished. It's already done. By his stripes, we were healed. That is what 1 Peter 2, 24 say. That is the exchange that took place. That great exchange that took place on the cross of Calvary. So now he took all our clothing of sin, uh, filthy rocks, everything, and give us the clothing of righteousness. So if you are born again Christian, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus was our substitute on the cross. He became our divine substitute. Amen. Jesus took our place. Jesus was punished that we might be forgiven. So the Bible talk about that in the book of uh, Isaiah 53, 10. He said he, he pleases the Lord, that is the Father, to bruise his son, he made his, his, his soul an offering for sin, for guilt. So if today you are believing in Jesus Christ, you cannot, be, you cannot stay anymore in guilt. You cannot be in guilt because Jesus Christ became your guilt offering. He became your guilt offering. Even for sin now, you, that is why the blood of Jesus can purge your conscience from every dead work so that you, cannot, you can save the living God. Now then, you cannot be anymore uh, uh, in guilt again or in sin. Before in the old covenant, the blood of Jesus, they say he just only, um, he only just, uh, they say, cover sin. So but he could not remit sin because without shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sin. But now the blood of Jesus Christ sanctifies us once and for all. That is what the book of uh, uh, Romans uh, 10 is saying. The once and for all, if you are born again, Christian, you are sanctified once and for all you are now in god's family you there is no guilt no shame no condemnation for anyone who is in christ jesus amen in the name of the lord jesus christ so god called jesus christ our passover in the bible he say he's our passover lamb passover sacrifice that's why john the baptist was saying behold the lamb of god will take away the sin of the world yes jesus christ became that our substitute took our place 
Amen. In Jesus Christ, he became our sacrifice. So Jesus said, sacrifice and offering you do not want. There's a body you needed, you prepare. Because Jesus borrowed the body from the womb of Mary and used it and clothed himself with it. He is the God man. And he clothed himself with it without sin, no blemish. And went to the cross and died for us. So that he can now destroy the devil who had the power of death. Because in the old, in the before, in the before Jesus Christ got to the cross, the devil was using death, the fear of death, to torment the human race since from the garden to, to the cross. When Jesus rose from the dead, that is when that cannot happen anymore. So he cannot torment the human race again. So that body of that our old nature that used to be afraid of death was crucified with Christ on the cross of Calvary. So now we are having a new nature. And it's the Holy Spirit nature, the God nature living in us. We, we are not afraid of death because we died already with Christ. If anyone that is dead, the Bible says is free from sin. So if you are a born again Christian, you already died with Christ. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. It's not I will live again, but Christ living his life in me. So Christ is in you. He is the hope of glory. Your body is his temple. Jesus Christ became a poor, the Bible says, so that we should become, he said that God made him who was rich in heaven. He's a heavenly man, the God man. Who was rich, he made him to be poor so that through his poverty, we can become rich. So that was the divine exchange that took place on Calvary. Then the book of Galatians still talk again about how Jesus Christ became a, a cause for us. Cause is everyone who hung on the tree. Jesus hung on the tree on our behalf so that the blessing which God promised to Abraham, his friend, might come to us, the Gentile who did not know God, so that we can have that promise by the spirit of faith. So if you are born again Christian, Jesus, you are not under the cause again. You are under God's blessing. You are blessed in all spiritual blessing in the heavenly reign, in Christ Jesus. Jesus became your cause. On the cross of Calvary. They say it is written, cause is everyone who hung on the tree. So Jesus Christ hung on the tree on our behalf and became a cause for us. He all the old covenant, all that 600 and something laws, everything that we could not keep from God, which was a cause. Our ancestors, they worship idols, all kind of things they did, different things. But the Bible said, Jesus, now if you are a born again Christian, you are in Christ. And then Jesus Christ now fulfilled all this. So you became your substitute. And now he became a cause for you. You are not under, no longer under the cause again. You are under now God's blessing always. Even if you are in attack, even if you are in trouble, if you are in any situation, you are still under the blessing. Let not the devil fool you and say you are under the cause. It's not true. You have to know the truth and then the truth will set you free. So you read Galatians 3, Galatians 3, 13 to 15, talking about Jesus becoming a, our cause. He became our substitute on the cross, a cause so that we can become now the blessing. The Bible says, if anyone be Christ, if you belong to Christ, you are Abraham's seed. You are joined here according to that same promise that God promised Abraham, his friend. Amen? In the name of Jesus. So those are the divine exchange I just wanted to share with you today. I don't want this video to be too long in the name of Jesus. So God bless every one of you in Jesus Christ's mighty name. And uh, I, ho I hope this helps you to go to the scriptures and read it again and renew your mind so, so that you can be steadfast in these end times, in the word of God, in the new covenant, the works that Jesus finished on Calvary for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Put the whole armor of God in Ephesians 6. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue rising up against us when you, I say, let the tongue be condemned. Let the mouth be Clothe, be stopped, and let them be mute in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That is our inheritance as servants of Christ. Our righteousness is of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amen. In Jesus' name, we do not work for life righteousness. We got it as a free gift. Praise the Lord. So we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The Lord Jesus is the Lord of our righteousness. Amen. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. God bless you. Thank you, all my subscribers. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might in the mighty name of jesus be blessed and shalom thank you and god bless you